Hello everyone. Welcome to LICD Lecture 38B. Today we are going to discuss the effect of input bias currents on the op-amp inverting and non-inverting amplifier. Okay. So uh, we have seen earlier the various op-amp non-idealities, and out of them, one of them is input bias currents. Okay. So far in our entire analysis of op entire dealings with the op-amp circuits, we have always conveniently assumed that IB plus and IB minus are always equal to zero because of high input impedance. But we have really seen their values are not equal to zero. They have some finite value, right? And uh, we need to understand how the input bias current will affect the op-amp op performance. Okay. So what are the input bias currents? So these values are specified in the data sheet and uh, they have some value in nano amperes which are flowing into the op amp terminals. Okay. So this IV plus and IV minus can be represented or modeled by the cur constant current uh, which are leaving this terminal. So, okay. I mean, uh, yeah, IV plus and IV minus. So this is the practical op amp showing the bias currents. Now the next question is how do we model a DC offset to incorporate the offset? Uh, yeah, I think the question will be how do we model the bias currents in order to incorporate its effects in the calculations actually? Yeah, I think that is a slight mistake. So let us assume that these bias currents are constant. So IV minus and IV plus are constant and we represent them therefore by a constant current source. Fine, fine with this. Yeah. So next we'll see the effect of bias current on the non-inverting amplifier. So basically over here, if you see carefully, IV plus and IV minus are being uh, allotted to their particular places. And uh, if you see carefully, uh, let's assume that the op is idle in other aspects. That means only the bias current will be uh, effective, whereas, whereas all the other parameters Opam, uh, you know, non-ideal parameters are, uh, you know, not affecting this. So only one at a time we are studying, either bias current or offset, uh, input offset voltage. So over here, if you see carefully, IB plus is flowing entirely in the V in source. Hence, it doesn't play no role over here. Okay. So let's analyze the circuit for V in equal to zero. So for V in equal to zero, V plus is equal to zero. And that will be equal to V minus because of virtual ground concept. Now, since V minus is zero, no current flows through R1 register. So R1 also doesn't play any role. So current IB minus flows through register R2 alone, producing a small DC voltage drop across it. Okay. So the output voltage is given by IB minus into uh, R2. This is the amount of error which is present in the output for V in equal to zero. And error means small DC voltage. Therefore, the effect of bias current is that it introduces a DC error voltage at the output, even when V in is equal to zero. For example, let's say that IB minus is 80 nanoamperes. Now, for this, we have might have to check the data sheet. So let us open the data sheet and check the typical value of the input bias current. Okay, it will be ready now. Yeah, so let's go to specifications directly. So these are the specifications. Huh. So we are searching for input bias current year over year it is. IIB which is input bias current and their value is 80 na nano amperes typically and 500 nano amperes uh, maximum value. Okay, so these are the ranges of IB 80 nano amperes to 500 or 6 800 nano amperes okay now let us continue so let's say IV minus is 80 nano so 80 nano we know that it's a typical value we haven't uh, taken any number we have actually taken the number from the data set and let's also consider that r2 and r1 have a value of 10k and 1k so uh, if V is equal to zero, let's calculate how much is the error voltage. So V out is given by IV minus into R2 and R2 is 10 kilo ohm. So IV minus is 80 nano amperes. So a DC error voltage of IV minus into R2 that is 80 nano into 10 K that is equal to 0.8 millivolt 
DC error voltage is present at the output, and this point eight millivolts is due to the bias current. Okay, so that's how the bias currents will affect the non-inverting amplifier. Now let's see how it will affect the inverting amplifier configuration. Let me just uh, adjust the screen properly so that both the circuits are visible. Yeah, I guess it is visible now. Let us adjust this window also. Okay, I guess this much is enough. Yeah. So I'll I should expand this a little. Yeah. So assume that uh, this is the inverting amplifier, and we are modeling I B minus and I B plus are not zero basically, right? So assuming that the op-amp is ideal in all other aspects, we say in point number two that V plus is zero. So V plus is approximately equal to V minus is equal to zero, which is your virtual ground concept. Now, if you look carefully from the circuit, what will be I R one? I R one will be given by V in minus V minus upon R one. And V minus is zero, so I R one will be V in upon R one. Now we apply K C L at node number A, which gives us I R one is equal to I R two plus I B minus. So I what is will be I R two? I R two will be I R one minus I B minus. Now from the circuit we can also write that V R two is given by V minus minus V out. Okay, so V R two is I R two into R two. And V minus is zero, and minus V out is minus V out, basically, correct? So from here we can write V out is equal to minus I R two into R two, and uh, what is I R two? I R two is I R one minus I B minus. So from here we got it. Okay, now we open the bracket, and also I R one will be also be equal to V in upon R one. Okay, so putting into consideration everything, my output V out will be equal to. Minus V in upon R1 into R2, which is in the numerator, and plus I B minus into R2. Okay, so a normal inverting amplifier will give us this uh, pink, dark pink color term, which is V out is equal to minus R2 upon R1 into V in, and this green color is my DC error due to the bias current. Okay, so this I B minus into R2 is the unwanted error, which is Uh, present, if we like it or no, it is always there. So over here, if we substitute V in equal to zero, we'll get back this expression. V out is equal to I B minus into R two, and this is the amount of error in the output. So the effect of bias current again is introducing a DC error voltage at the output, even when V in is equal to zero. So again, if we use the same example, uh, I B minus is 18 nano, R two is 10 k, DC error voltage is. Uh, Uh, IV minus into R2 that is 80 nano into 10k, which will be around 0.8 millivolt precisely. So uh, this 0.8 millivolt is present at the output even without applying any input, and this is due to input bias current. So that's the effect of input bias current. And uh, with this, I have uh, come to the end of this uh, PDF. I hope that uh, this was useful for you all. And uh, next time we'll study the effect of input bias current on op-amp integrator circuit. So until then, have a good day and thank you.